time. Hello, judges. My name is Christian. In this day and age, greater visibility has been brought to the supply chain of producers, baristas, and consumers. Seeing everything at once has shown us how coffee is a broken system. It's a burning theater with a single exit labeled specialty. I want to frame this problem through the three pro- through the three courses of espresso, milk, and a signature beverage. As I move on to the first part of the supply chain, we're going to start with the producers. Our journey begins one decade ago in the historical city of Antigua, Guatemala. St. Frank Coffee, a cafe with a dream, to work with these smaller producers, started their first connection here with a man named Don Guayo. With an unshakable frame and a childlike gleam to his eyes, Don Guayo is Don Guayo. Don Guayo is beloved by the community as a leader. With an unshakable frame and a childlike gleam to his eyes, he's not only beloved as a leader, but he also approaches learning with an open-handed excitement. Last month, I had the privilege to be able to uh, meet Don Guayo as well as go visit his farm at Volcano, located on Volcano Agua at 1,700 meters above sea level. At this higher elevation, coffee fruit maturation slows down, yielding to a more expressive and nutrient-dense bean. Bringing us back to the burning theater analogy, the single emergency exit that consumers have out of this is by chasing the tastiest expression. Roasteries and importers drive the industry through the single exit, clogging it. People are left behind chasing and scrambling for the next innovation, the next processing trend. This ultimately causes producers to be discarded and left behind. This leads to a sterile lens of taste. The committed relationship that St. Frank has to sourcing Don Guayo's coffee opens up an alternative exit. It's one that pursues long-standing relationships, a symbiosis that promises to find solutions even through the rough seasons. Because of this, Don Guayo has been able to, he's been able to make risks as well as source Malawi Gesha seeds. Gesha is a coffee variety that is known to be extremely expressive, floral, and tea-like. It's also polarizing because these smaller producers usually have trouble accessing it, is not good enough for these smaller producers. This lower yield is not great enough for these smaller producers. That is, unless you have a stable and committed relationship, this is that coffee. Its name is Guayo Malawi Gesha. Today, I have a surprise for you as Guatemala is now just finishing their harvest season. And I have personally brought back freshly harvested Guayo Malawi Gesha. The coffee was literally just on its plant just weeks ago. Coffee this vibrant is difficult to obtain through normal importation and only possible because Don Guayo made it possible for me to bring it back today. I'll be pulling your shots all at the same recipe to showcase how I can transform the entire flavor. I'll be extracting your coffee at 19 grams in, 45 grams out for approximately 26 seconds. This coffee is fully washed to showcase its full range of flavors, such as its cleanliness, enhancing the delicate notes of the volcanic terroir. Please anticipate tasting notes of lemongrass, cacao nibs, 
And finally, and finally, pomelo. As I place the espressos in front of you, please stir 10 times, and I'm excited for you to taste the relationship of over a decade. Enjoy. Put your hands together for Christian's espressos, y'all. As I move on to your milk course, I want to focus on the side of the baristas, the frontline workers. Baristas are the bridge between consumers and, cons and producers. When we talk about the ethics of coffee, we often like to focus on the side of the producers. What's also hard to talk about is the side of the baristas. In the burning theater, baristas are treated as a transitory role. There's little opportunity for growth, to make it a long-term career change path. You're trained to believe that sacrifices must be made in the name of passion. It consumes you until you have nothing left and are forced to move on from it. The single emergency exit that baristas have is the transition out into adjacent roles such as roasting, quality assurance, or even becoming a cafe owner yourself. But like how we need long-term relationships with producers, we need these same relationships with baristas. We need to cultivate an environment that doesn't capitalize off of their personal sacrifice. It's not about receiving more, but about meeting baristas where they are at and for what they are worth. Baristas use coffee as a vessel to connect with the consumer like the milk to coffee. And like milk, they can transform coffee to become more welcoming and accessible. For this milk course, I decided to use lactose-free whole milk as um, it's not only more accessible, but it's also naturally sweeter. The process of converting lactose molecules breaks down complex sugars into simpler galactose and glucose. With the high simple sugar content, this leads to a higher Maillard reaction when reduced down into an evaporated milk. I wanted to mimic the same process of roasting coffee where the Maillard reaction causes more intense and complex flavor profiles. I'll be setting aside your signature beverage shots to cool down. I also used whole milk, the whole milk, and I ended up freeze drying it, leaving behind no more water and a creamy experience at the end. I then combine equal parts of whole evaporated freeze dried to augment the complexity, sweetness, and a creamy experience. I'll be steaming this milk at 120 degrees Fahrenheit to bring out the caramel flavor that's provided by the Guayo Gesha. It's hard to talk about this side of the supply chain on this specific stage, especially with a room here full of baristas and industry leaders. This topic often brings division, but that is not what I've been come he came here to set out to do. Cafe owners often feel the pressure in a lean system to squeeze at some part of the supply chain to stay profitable. But we as an industry do not need to continue to accept those terms. If a system requires us to squeeze at some part, 
and justify it, that means that system is broken. When combined with espresso, the milk will transform flavors. You'll get salted caramel chew, fruitcake, and stroop waffle. Enjoy. The tactile that you'll experience is heavyweight, a velvety mouthfeel. Lastly, a creamy finish. I hope you guys can see how when milk is combined with espresso, it can transform it. Just like when baristas are seen as a long-term position with measured growth, they can be better equipped to change the industry. The last part I wanted to talk about is the side of the consumers, the final part of the supply chain. Consumers are the ones that bring value. And they help connect us to the other parts of the industry. And because they create value, we need to make education more accessible. I'll be starting with 50 milliliters of the clarified transformation. And I'll first be starting with a cascara concentrate. This is done by brewing and drying cascara and brewing it into a tea. Next, I'll be combining it with jasmine tea to add white florality. With this clarified transformation, I then used a milk washing process. This is done where milk is acidulated by lemon juice and, and heat, leaving behind a clarified transformation. This clarified transformation, I'll be adding 60 milliliters of. I'll be adding espresso on top of this, and I'll be creating, trying to create new flavors of oolong, of oolong, tangerine, and lastly, danimal yogurt. The tactile that you'll experience is you'll, you'll experience is lightweight, a sl silky mouthfeel, and lastly, a coating finish. As I, lastly, I'll be adding jasmine flowers on top to complete that florality. Judges, if you look on top of the espresso, and please wait to drink until I call time, you'll see just the espresso and one exit. But if you look back, you'll see all the layers that shape your supply chain of taste. With this in mind, uh, 
Coffee is broken, but I really choose to be here despite all of that. And we all choose to be here despite all of that. I want to thank you so much for allowing me to be here. As well as even though coffee is a burning theater, we can help each other move on as well as look back behind us to bring coffee to a brighter future. Thank you so much. Time. Give it up. Christian Bach, St. Frank, San Francisco, California. Come on over, Christian. How you feel? Uh, definitely got off track at some point. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you look good. Your drink looks amazing. I want some. <laughs> right now. How much did you put into this competition? I mean, like, dig deep. Let me know. What, what happened? Yeah, I put, I put a lot of effort into it. And I think I really tried to challenge myself um, to the point where I definitely flew very close to the sun. <laughs> and uh, I definitely made burned. some risks. You didn't get burned. I got burned a little a bit. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I tried my best as well as I'm really proud of the drinks I put forth. Yeah, and all the effort and uh, time behind the scenes. And I deeply appreciate everyone who's supported me in this like, short journey I've been here. How do you choose a coffee for an event like this? Um, I think in this case, it wasn't really I chose a coffee, but more the coffee.